Coming up next on Adventurer, a chat with a man who surfs waves the size of apartment buildings. Stay tuned. I'm Jim Clash, and this is Adventurer, the show with guests who truly push their lives to the limits. No talking heads here, just the real deals. In the wake of the estimated 75-foot wave surfed last month at California's Cortis Bank, we decided to catch up with a man who knows something about big waves. Ten years ago, Ken Bradshaw set a world record for the largest wave ever surfed, an 85-foot behemoth at Outside Log Cabins Reef a few miles off Hawaii's north shore. The day was January 28, 1998, known as Big Wednesday. Bradshaw's record still stands. Following are excerpts from an interview conducted just a few miles from where he set his record. The biggest thing I'd ever seen, it was like looking at a four or five story building just going through the ocean without breaking. It was just a big swell moving through the ocean at tremendous speed. Because we ended up being about 42, 43, 4 miles an hour with the boat staying ahead of it as it began to reach the actual reef and then shoal up and get taller and taller. As it gets taller and taller, you finally have enough inertia and enough steepness that you can let go of the rope and then you can actually begin surfing. So as soon as I let go of the rope, Dan pulls away and then I begin to drop down. We, we are afraid at all? Uh, it's funny. It's hard for anybody to really understand a lifelong passion. I mean, I used to sit and watch this particular area in the ocean break on those really big days in Waimea when we couldn't surf Waimea. We were forced to stay on land because there was no way to get to it. And we actually would sit on the hillside or the cliffside or the beach in front of it and look at this wave going, that wave's incredible. That wave's top to bottom and it's got to be 40 feet. It's got to have an 80 foot face on it. And we were calling that the biggest wave we had ever seen. So to finally have that day happen, finally be there for that day, to finally actually ride that place I've always wanted to surf my whole life, like 25 years of waiting for that day. No, I wasn't scared. I wanted it. I wanted things so bad that even though I saw it behind me and I was afraid Dan might not want me to have it, and when we were going through that wave, I remember just going, you know, on the end of the road going, he'd look back and he'd look at, you know, what was behind me, and you could see in his eyes and I was afraid he was going to pull away. I was afraid he was going to give up. I kept going, go. I just kept doing this. Go, don't you stop. Don't you stop. You know? And I had to depend on him to get me there. And if he didn't believe I could want it, and he could tell in his eyes, but he kept looking over his shoulder. He didn't like what he saw. And I kept going, no, go, go, go. You know? So maybe he was a little more afraid than you were. He was a bit more apprehensive, obviously, the whole day. But then Dan didn't have the same passion that I had to ride giant waves. What's it sound like? Sound. It's funny. At 30 miles an hour in an open car, you can realize how much wind there is. Now you add the speed of the wave and then the, the wind coming up the face. Because there's probably trade winds probably offshore. So you probably have a 70 mile hour wind probably at the very crest of the wave sometimes. Definitely a 40 to 50 mile hour wind. So the wind is always constant. There's always a roar from the wind. Then you have the thunder of the shaking of shock waves from the waves themselves breaking. So you always feel this thunder and roar going around you. But to identify just one over the other is hard because there's so much going on. There's, your senses are basically almost being overloaded. And for somebody who's not used to it or not accustomed to it, it would be overwhelming between the noise, the speed, the boat, the, the, the wind, the chop. You know, the offshore spray, I mean, it's all so much going on that you really have to be focused. And you don't notice one sound over another, it's just a constant roar. A roar of emotion, a roar of experiences, a roar of desire. How would you feel right now if somebody broke your world record? <sighs> It'd be sad. It'd be sad if, if somebody rode a bigger wave right now and I couldn't get to it. My biggest problem in life right now is not will or desire, it's financial ability. I can't get to these waves when they happen somewhere other than Hawaii. And they're happening everywhere around the world. There's giant waves happening on every coast, in every part of the world, at some point, Belhara, France, a uh, place off of uh, Hasegor, in, in, in the border at uh, Spain. 
uh, South Africa, a place called Dungeons off of Cape Town. Um, there's a place off of, uh, off of California called Cortez Banks. There's one off of Oregon called Punta Blanca. There's one off of Northern Oregon off of a lighthouse that they say gets 125 feet. And it's actually gone over, the swell has actually gone over a lighthouse at 125 feet. So the waves exist. Can we get to them? But no one's ever surfed one bigger than you. But no one has ridden one bigger than me. Cool stuff for sure. After our interview, Ken took me out on his wave runner in some 30-foot surf. It gave me a tiny feel for what demons these daredevils regularly face. 30-footers are nothing to Ken, but my knees are still shaking. I'm Forbes adventurer Jim Clash. To read my column, pick up Forbes magazine, or click on Forbes.com adventurer. And thanks for watching the Forbes.com video network.